All right, Nick, we're going to come in early tonight. We're going to come in a little early tonight. Um, you may be a slightly ahead of me, but that's okay. Because LED La Cruz just made this not so intense. This is fun. This is fun. This is fun. For some runs. If we're going to be honest, though, it was a little worrisome there for a while. We were, we were, we were never in doubt. Fighting for our lives, uh, some are saying. Chat, good to see you. Glad to see you're here. Gonna put the little chat up here. Let's get the folks in. Maybe maybe they'll be kind tonight. Just kidding, love you. Put the little chat up here. My favorite thing that you do when we start these shows anymore is you you just absolutely hawk in your browser tabs. You just you're like you're you're looking through whichever one's playing the sound. You're just you're just searching for it. Yeah, you find it pretty quickly. To be fair, but I'm get I'm getting better. I'm getting in mid season form. <laughs> the search of the browser. <laughs> All right, folks, you know the drill. Uh, please like, please like, please like. All right, that's uh that. By the way, we start the. Uh, I should say Nick. Nick is the real one. Uh, Nick always puts these these uh, things in here. He schedules them, allows you guys to jump in this chat kind of throughout the game. You guys do some chatter throughout the game. Enjoy that. We get likes. We got a good amount of likes before we even get in here. So that's called getting off to a good start. All right. Sorry. Uh, we're going to swap... Uh, What's Ty up? Steve, we're gonna stop ta- swap Ty Steve and Ellie here. On our rundown. Yeah, I mean Ellie's yeah, Ellie's gotta move up. I mean <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, look at this. I tell you what. Poor Tyler. <laughs> Poor Tyler, he's overshadowed once again. I'm not going to let that happen, though. No. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to be a flower parade. This is a flower parade tonight. We're we're handing them out. We're going up and down the line. Yep. Speaking of uh, speaking of flowers, uh, you you know at weddings when they uh, when they usually have some kind of parting thing when they're leaving the wedding. You know they do. Some people do bubbles. Some people do sparklers. Some people throw flowers. What's uh what 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 do you think your your the most majestic look is of the uh, wedding pictures when they're walking walking back through their uh, right after the ceremony? What is my personal most majestic one? Yeah, which one do you think looks the best in pictures? I don't know. I, I was not very sober for mine, so you weren't you were you weren't wait whoa breaking news breaking <laughs> news Nick wasn't sober for his wedding. Are you suggesting to me that you weren't sober for when you when you when you when you when you got done with the ceremony? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about like after you took pictures and all that and you went to the you went to the reception. I'm talking about, you know, when you're leaving your your uh your is it not the recitals, but your um vows. So so it, it like caught up with me right at the end. Like I was good and then when we we're like walking out, I was like, ooh, I'm not good. You know, one of those type things. Gotcha. So you were uh, nervous, but then we had like or four... no, it just like you know the the, the liquid kind of you know took over. But then we had like four hours before the uh, reception, and yeah, I was I rallied kind kind of like the Reds uh, eighth inning here tonight, Trace. All right. Come on, Will. I was gonna I was gonna brag about this game and I knew what was gonna happen as soon as I bragged about it too, by the way. Still doing pretty well. Just just not as not as a record of a pace as as as, as we were once on. Oh, I, I got a little uh Trace, I got a little at stake here. I thought this was uh this was toast. I did a little parlay tonight. Oh really? What do we have? Yeah. I had Anderson over uh, one and a half walks. Which, What's left? Which, What's which, left? Let's get to the church. Cut the chase. Will Benson hit. Will okay, Benson hit. So we need a hit. All right. Ellie was the other hit, and then Will Benson. I just assumed Will Benson was going to get another at bat, but here we go. Come on, Will. This will be a nice Rooting for you. change, to be honest. 
fight. Seems like he fouls us off. What we got here. Benson was plus one or minus one thirty to get a hit. That's I know it's lefty, but man, that's that's pretty low. But you know, Vegas always knows. So. Yeah, come on, Willie. He's fighting for you. He, might, he always he might, does. That's, he might have, he might have been out already on your screen, but on my screen, he's still fighting. Nice, no, he's, he's still fighting. Well, can't win them all. <laughs> That's a good splitter. Let's go to the ninth. Though. That's a good splitter. Good splitter. Who's throwing by? Who's throwing right here? By the way, uh, Diaz threw on Wednesday, right? Yeah, he's not. I don't I mean, he think threw like Diaz an inning is throwing. A third, didn't he? Diaz isn't throwing. Give me somebody else. Who's it going to be? Buck Farmer. Does it really get the people going? Yeah, I'm just asking. <laughs> Brent Suter? Brett, when in doubt, Brett Suter is probably your choice. Is, is it? I know I know. I should know this. I know I should know this. Is it Brett or Brent? It's Brent. Int. Like and I, I, always screw, I always screw it up, too. It yeah. feels like it should be Brett. Brett Suter flows better, doesn't it? Yeah, I just, I've, I've, I just feel like I thought it was Brent. Int. For a, for a while, and it's like every time people say it so fast that then then it like then I like subconsciously do this weird thing in my brain where I start to think do they say Brett, and then they, and then I hear enough people do that in a row, and I thought I'm like maybe yeah. I'm wrong, <laughs> and I've yeah. just never Googled it because that'd be the easy thing to do. Yeah, it's Brent. Yeah, like the Brent Spence Bridge. There you go. Shout out to him. By the way. Speaking of that, who is that? I'm, I'm looking that up now. Let's do some fun. Let's do some Buck. Fun. It's Buck. It's Buck. Told you. I mean, you might as well just put me in, coach. Let me be. Let me. <laughs> let me. Uh, what's the. Uh, my wife. My wife. Uh, I feel like was uh, operated on him at uh, Beacon, but I can never think of the guys. The, what's the bench coach's name? The old guy. JR House. No. Active. Yeah, he's there. Freddie Benavides? Benavides, yes. Freddie Benavides has managed like 11 games because of how many times yeah. David's gotten tossed. Yes. He just looks like yeah, a maybe, nice, maybe a nice David man. Just, David just loves Freddie. You know, I was like, I got to give this guy as many opportunities as I can. I'm going to tie Steve on base uh, three times today, too. Brent Spence. Uh, was uh was born in uh, December twenty fourth of eighteen seventy four. He lived on this God's green earth until September eighteenth of nineteen sixty seven. Damn, that's a long time. He was a native of Newport, Kentucky, and he's a long Democrat congressman, attorney, and banker from Northern Kentucky. Okay. He was very he was very active in local and state politics, serving first in the Kentucky Senate. Um, and it turns out that uh, the Brent Spence Bridge was named for him. All right, dun dun dun! Oh, look at Ellie! Look at Ellie! You're ahead of me. Did he make a play? I mean, it's, he just oh, he makes yeah. it all look so easy. <laughs> you are such just, a slob, dude. He's, he's a Come pro, on, bro. brother. He a made a pros, play. bro. He's a, a pro. Look at bro. this guy, man. Just regular ground ball. I mean, whoa. whoa. You weren't here. You were not here on the a, night in Philly. Fun. Poor Chuck Walter had to deal with this chat. Just, I mean, I don't even know if I want to go back and look at some of the disgraceful things that were said about our Lord and our Savior, Ellie De La Cruz. All right, it was it was makes me want to puke. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Ellie didn't have a pretty good night in Philly. He had a bad night in Philly. It wasn't one of his higher. It wasn't one of his higher career uh, highlights. Oh no! Don't don't oh no! Oh. I thought Steer was just about to get. 
What is Steer doing? <laughs> I thought he was just about to get tackled by Ellie. <laughs> Whew. What did he say to him? <laughs> Barry just goes, a lot of smiles. He said, what? Your microphone might be cutting again. Oh, no. Barry said, a lot of smiles out there. <laughs> Am I cutting out? Uh, You're laggy. You're a little laggy. You're not cutting, cutting out. out. You're just laggy. Yeah. We'll, we'll <sighs> figure this out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Your 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 uh your freeze frames are great. By the way, that guy's living the high life right now. Look at him. Strike one. Strike one. Need one more out. DFA Barry Lark. Dude, he is he is. I mean, I don't I don't I try not to say nothing bad about most people in regards to uh The broadcast situation because it's not easy no matter what always people are going to complain no matter what doesn't matter how good you are you will have people complain about you but barry he is on another level <laughs> greg got an unbelievable screenshot of me for the uh come join us live did he <laughs> just like <laughs> oh did he strike him out yet? Because you're probably close to the next pitch. Not yet. He did now. Struck him out. Struck Keep him out. Board, yes. It's a winner, Trace. That is a winner. All right, Start Buck. Seven minute intro. Buck, yeah, look at that. 11 pitches if you're keeping track at home, by the way. 11 pitches. Efficiency. Efficiency. Game Perfect. started at 640, Nick. Game's over at 853. That is Rob Manfred. Just dropping his pants for everybody to see. Look at him. He's just like, come watch the big leagues, baby. It only takes two hours. You'll be home in no time. That means one thing. We will uh, We will now do a show. win the World Series in four straight. It was a sweep. In the dirt, it's a wild pitch. He comes back to the game. That ball is fair. Cincinnati's ahead. Two games to knock. Welcome Joe Randa to Cincinnati. Adam Dunn has done it again. Benzinger backing and calling. And the 1990 World Championship belongs to the Cincinnati Reds. Marty, yes, this is Adam from Milwaukee. Hey, Adam, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good. Do you think Scott Hedenberg is a good player? Done up there with the bases loaded, the outfield deep and around toward right, and the 1-0 on the way to the plate. Swing on, long drive, right field, and this one belongs to the rim. And a high drive, hit back into deep right field. Junior has just knocked the door down to the 500 club. De La Cruz is, oh my goodness, look at this kid run. My, oh my, that is a triple. Matt McClain's first big league bomb. Spencer Steer's first big league hit is a home run to straightaway center field. Joey Votto's done it again. The pitch, Votto swings high in the air. And I can't tell you how much it means to play in front of everyone here in Cincinnati as a Red. Uh, what a gift. What a tremendous gift. So thank you. Thank you. I think I can speak for all of Red's country. Joey Votto, thank you.
Homer Bailey. Round ball to third. Frazier gloves. Throw to first and Homer Bailey for the second time in his major league career. Nick, a winning edition, a winning edition. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been a long minute. No, I was not. I was not abstaining. It just took a while to get a win. And here we are. I am very thankful. I'm very proud. I am very humbly, uh, humbly a Reds fan. Uh, I had seen the lineup card and I'll be the first to admit, be the first to admit, uh, I wasn't excited. I wasn't excited, and uh, the person that I wasn't excited to see in a certain spot just turns out to be a guy that uh, that played played his tail off. Now I know you want to put him down there on the on the on the on the rundown. I know where you're going. You got Ellie De La Cruz, of course. If he does anything, he just rises to the top. But most importantly, I want to shout out Tyler Stevens before we get this show in front. I, I want to get out in front of it, just so just so we're aware. Apparently, all those hard hit balls that we have been talking about—that five hit, five hard hit ball game on Sunday—finally rearing its head around the other way. Let's go! He's back, baby. Now, now that's being optimistic. Um, all right. Well, here's how this usually goes on, on a winning edition show. Uh, we usually give uh, a quick little rundown here. We'll talk about Ellie, uh, kind of a one man, a one man wrecking th- uh, wrecking crew tonight. Offensive uh, slugfest by Ellie. Well, the first run was more or less just the speed that he possesses, and then from there uh, we have Ladolo, Tyler Stevenson, who I want to give as many flowers as humanly possible, and then we'll get into the second half of the rundown here in. Uh, here in just a bit, I, I do know that I, I want to get ahead of this as well, Nick. I'd heard rumblings. I'd heard rumblings, of course. These are rumors. Don't want to put you on the spot, but I think you had heard uh, you might try to become an Espinal guy. Are you are you are you rethinking that? I, I'm fully on board the Santiago Espinal train. I think he's a league average player. Uh, I don't think he's any more than that. Let me be very clear. I think he's a league average player. I, I think that will will show itself over the course of the year and. I'm now full on board the Espinal yeah. train. Yeah, maybe, love, the P, maybe the maybe the maybe the penal league. Maybe the penal league. I love someone that everyone just hates. Everyone just there loves is something dump about on. you. Yeah, I, I I'm drawn to it. So fully on board. Well, good luck with that. I mean, best wishes uh, for those that uh, are just joining us. Please do us a quick little favor, like the like the show, uh, the little thumbs up button. That would really 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 benefit us. But more importantly, it benefits the Reds. It actually scientifically has been proven that it helps them win baseball games and score more runs. In fact, really, not a lot of people got in here towards towards the eighth inning, and then they started liking the stream, and then magically the red score, uh, what was basically, what, five runs there? Uh, but before I get into much of the game, let's do the, uh, the old box score recap, as they say. Nick, you got anything to add before you go to it? Can we run through some Super Chats first? We already got four in there. Sure, absolutely. I'd love to do that. I got them up if you'd like me to get started. Uh, you do the first one. Okay, this is from Joe Taff. We've been making contact. Good to see some hits start coming to fruition. Love to see it, gents. Let's keep it up. Thank you, Joe. Nine ninety nine. Appreciate you. Yeah, we do appreciate that, Joe. Thank you. And I also just noticed something. You can like. You can like messages now. Is that a thing? Can you see that on your screen? I, I do. I, Chat, I can like you see it. that? Can you just like, can you like, I've been asking for that. I've been begging YouTube to figure it out. You know, they got enough money to basically, have, I think they have more money than God. You'd think that they could get us just a simple like button on some of the, on some of the messages, you know? So I do, hey, we're, we're making progress. So shout out to Joe. Uh, Ricky says, Ellie De La Cruz is a Cincinnati Red. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. We should be, we should be thankful for that. Uh, Mark Fetter says, Ace Lodolo. He's looking like it. I mean, listen, I, I I was the first to admit that I'm not sure the Reds have an ace. I think they have some good arms. Uh, and, and we go. I'm not doing this whole again, this whole bit again about uh, the the basically the semantics of what an ace is. But yes, Ladol has looked unbelievably good. Big C, you later. 
He's been a member for six months, and he would like to let everybody know that he extends the intro. He wants to extend the intro. Everybody wants to cut the intro down. Big C wants to extend it. He also says, this is a kid's show. This is a kid's show, so I got to be very careful here. He said, also says, also, let's fun. And then there's like three words that K-I-N after that, and then it says, go Reds. Sir Boy Wonder says, Trace, how about the blind squirrel? The blind squirrel, baby, is going to be the show for me. I tell you what, Tyler Stevenson, you are the man. You are the man. You know those guys that look like they're poor and they're broke and they're just hanging around, the old scratch-offs when you go to the old convenient mark and they're just scratching away, scratching away, scratching away. You're like, you could use that money for your rent, you know? You don't have to waste all your money in here. But there's every once in a while you walk in there and somebody just hit it big, baby. They made it to the big time. Tonight is Tyler Stevenson's night. He finally scratched that ticket off and boy, did he win some of it back. Good for him, though. Still not sold, right. but I, I do. This is Tyler Stevenson's night. Got the box score recap, Nick. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, your Reds taking on the LA Angels. Bottom of the second, Ellie De La Cruz singled on a chopper up the middle. Stole second base on the 1-0 pitch to Jake Fraley. Took off on the very next pitch for third base. Catcher Logan O'Hop threw the ball down the line. Ellie Speed made it one nothing Cincinnati on literally just a chopper back up the middle. Uh, the Angels would get one back in the fifth off Nick Lodolo. But Tyler Stevenson got that right back with a 433-foot bomb into the bleachers. It was the hardest hit ball of his career. Career best, 111 miles an hour off the bat. 2-1 Cincinnati. Nick Lodolo was brilliant through seven and a third. Uh, he did leave with runners on second and third, but Fernando Cruz picked him up by striking out Joe Adele and Zach Nito to end the inning to keep it 2-1 Reds. And Trace, as he pointed out on Twitter, Stevenson made a couple really nice picks on balls in the dirt that pretty easily could have brought home the tying run. Nick Lodolo's final line, six and a third, seven hits, one earned run, no walks, six strikeouts, only needed 80 pitches to get through uh, six and a third. Uh, Jonathan India in the bottom of the eighth led off with a walk. Spencer Steer singled. Stuart Fairchild laid down a perfect sack bunt. Perfect. And then Nick, Mar and then Nick Martini. Our guy was hit right in the ass. <laughs> that mm -hmm. brought in a run. And then Ellie De La Cruz, he picked up Nick Martini. Hit a three-run home run to left field. 7-1 Cincinnati. Also, during the game trace, got to mention it, Jonathan Indy, he snapped his 0 for 24 skid. Some great defense we'll talk about later in the game um, as well. But Buck Farmer, he got it done in the top of the ninth. Reds win 7-1. In the losing streak, Trace. Yes, they did. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. And you know what else today we have? We have a legit deep drive of the day. Tyler Stevenson, man. Who thought... Who, who, a hand, hands up. Everybody in the chat, hands up. Who actually thought that this dude could hit a ball this far? Nobody. Not even him. Tyler was shocked. They showed him the iPad. Tyler said, there's no way that's real. But it is. 111 mile an hour off the bat. 430, 30, 433 feet, excuse me. That is a launch angle of 30 degrees. And uh, the win probability for Cincinnati Reds jumped 19.3% to 71%, leading 2-1 to one over the LA Angels. And as we all know, the Deep Drive of the Day is sponsored by Deep South Commodities. DSC loves Ty Steve. What do you think about that? DSC is a leader in renewable commodities for biofuel production, specializing in used cooking oil, collection, aggregation, and sales. Visit www.deepsouthcommodities.com for more information. Thank you to our friends at Deep South Commodities. And John. John, I think, is in the chat. I don't know if he's still watching, but thank you, John. If you are watching, thank you. We very much appreciate you. And uh, you know what? Let's get right into it. You have Ellie De La Cruz in the rundown here. I'll let you do the honors. Of course, he has been pretty much a one-man wrecking crew uh, as of late offensively for this ball club. It is kind of funny to look back and, and just think about how crazy a roller coaster this season is when you do a daily show and people are going wild about how Illy De La Cruz is, is this, that, and the other. Um, I'm still semi-concerned about his gonna what, what will be his production from the right-handed side of the plate, per se, but um, not overly concerned, just saying that maybe of all the things that I could say, that's the only area of his game that I would say, you know what, that might not pan out. But when you're as athletic and fast as he is, he changes, excuse me, he changes the game. I mean, I don't, 
Who else in the in the league? I'm being serious. Who else in the league? Ronald Acuna, I guess maybe. That 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 can just get on base and then you immediately they find themselves immediately being able to make an impact and almost just score on their own. Well, yeah, as you pointed out, I mean, you know, the concern is is his ability to hit left-handed pitching. Uh, tonight, they hit the ball hard, just a little chopper, right, you know, right up through the middle. But he's able to use his speed to get on base and create a run out of it. I don't know there's anyone that does does anything like that um, in the sport right now. That, that's what just allows him not to to slump too bad. Uh, but but even other than you know his little cheap hit that he just created a, a run out of pure chaos, he's also tearing the cover off the ball at least on the other side. And for a Reds lineup that's been struggling, I mean this this Ellie De La Cruz has really put the Reds on his back right now, and is a major reason why the Reds aren't three or four games under five hundred. I mean I, I know he's not capable responsible for all those wins i'm not not going overboard but uh where would the reds be if ellie de la cruz wasn't playing at a close to an elite level right now no he may well he's like i said the thing that makes him elite more times than not just what he does on the base paths is elite like elite elite like maybe the best um when we say elite usually that means you're putting him in the category of what the top handful of guys in the league maybe top top 10 top 15 type type suggestion um and I don't know what the the analytics or the statistics would say cuz I've not got a chance obviously to watch everybody play but but point being is that when he gets on the base pass I can't imagine anybody else being as successful as him in creating havoc and and some of that is probably unquantifiable in regards to the fact you know, he hits a ball, he hits a ball that, that a guy makes an error on, and then all of a sudden, I don't know if you'd get credited for for being the reason the guy makes the error. It just seems like, again, he found a way to score uh, without even another hit being placed. So, you know, I mean, I, I at this point, you know what he has done, I think, hopefully for the vast majority of rational fans, is he buys himself a significant more time of you just relaxing and being like, all right, Ellie's a guy like we don't, we don't need to sit here and keep doing this every week about whether or not he, you know, belongs to be an everyday guy or not an everyday guy or, you know, whatever it may be. But, but I am thankful to see that him and steer. I don't want to say put a, put a, put them. They've put us on our back. Yeah. And, and I like your point. I think it's, it's worth reiterating over and over again. He's going to slump again. Let's not be, panicked when it happens let's not be surprised when it happens uh it's the natural progression of a, of a player that's trying to figure things out on the fly but I, li- I liked your point you can't say that enough about what he does to a defense logan O'Hop, looking at the scouting report right now on him he's an above average 55 grade defensive catcher uh and and he caused him to just completely throw a ball down the line that never had a chance a complete just you know, if that was if that was our catcher, we'd be like, "What is he doing?" Right? I mean, that that's if you're on the other side of it, and that's what Ellie does to a defense, and that is not it's not quantifiable. So Ellie De La Cruz has a 1,000 OPS right now, and he's also doing things that don't even show up um, in the stats that aren't quantifiable. Uh, man, the, the this the sky's the limit. It's just great to see him off to such a great start this season. Speaking of it right here as we uh, transition into Lodolo, one thing I was thinking of being an Angels fan and I would have been absolutely just uh, raging throughout my house as I watched it is, uh, could you imagine walking Espinal in a one-run game <laughs> towards, in the, what uh, what was it, the eighth inning? Could you imagine? I mean, oh my Lanta, I would be absolutely pissed. But they did it, so thankful. I'm very thankful to them. Shout out to the Angels for that. Uh, Nick Lodolo, what what more can you say about this guy? You know the the cool thing about this this I guess situation is is that th- there was real fear and fear is maybe a strong word, but there was a real concern that I had with Lodolo because it felt like hey he was slotted to come back. At first, remember we were told like oh it's just, it's got a it's it's a foot situation. It, it, he'll kind of get it sorted out. Then you realize it was more serious. Then he's supposed to come back towards the end of last season, and then all of a sudden he gets set back from that. And then there was a situation where, hey, he said he's supposedly going to be ready to pitch in spring training, and they're like, well, we want to be precautious. And like at some point, Nick, I was like, um, this is like the boy who cried wolf. Like that's, I'm not sure this guy's going to come back and be what we ultimately want him to be, period. And thankfully, now to his credit, Lodolo mentioned time and time again that he was ready. He felt great. It's just that the Reds wanted to be extra precautious. 
He wasn't about that. And then obviously he threw in spring training, still not readily available right at the beginning of the year. Comes back and he does look fantastic. And you know what? Remember what Sam LaCure said? What did Sam LaCure say? What did he say? What, did he, what, what were the rumblings around the old, the old facility, Nick? You remember what I said? Nick Lodolo has never looked better. Boy, oh boy, and that might be true. It, it is It is worth pointing out tonight, to be fair. They give up nine hard hit balls tonight. Oh, God. Hey, I, I'm being fair. I'm being fair. When, when I say the Reds had a bunch of hard hit balls, I, I, I should point it out the other way. Now, yeah. just, like, just like in Seattle, what, what do those pitchers do? You make your own luck. Nick Lodolo didn't walk anyone, right? That's right. Yeah. So that's, you know... the. You deserve all the credit for that. Um, so, again, I don't think Nick Lodolo is going to sustain a 0. 0.75 ERA uh, throughout the year. Like, like there's going to be some, you know, some natural, uh, I don't want to say regression. I don't think it's like this. Some turbulence. Some turbulence, yeah, maybe, yeah. you know, just. Um, but but just I love the fact that he's just coming out attacking the hitters. Uh, at the end of, at the end of uh, his time last year, he was struggling with that. And, and I think that maybe now I'm feeling more like that was the injury. That wasn't a, you know, a flaw or something that he needed to work on. It was really just all the injury. Uh, I think his, his command looks really, really sharp right now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he's, he's the ace of the staff. Please just say a prayer every night. This guy could stay healthy because he completely changes a lot about this team. Yeah, he does. And you know who else would change a lot about this team if he if he if he finds a way to play really, really well is Tyler Stevenson. And the thing about Tyler Stevenson is this is I've always been very, very, very concerned about his defense. I don't know if he's capable of getting better defensively. And I will I will, I just want to say this. I'm not gonna overreact, right? The way that the way that I traditionally would overreact perhaps on uh, on the negative side, I should maybe overreact on the optimistic side. But my my instinct tells me that's to, to, to the brakes but everybody's going to give fernando cruz a lot of credit right tomorrow uh he's gonna he's gonna be one of the guys that maybe he's getting talked about in the post game tomorrow when you look at the box score you're gonna be like wow fernando cruz based off the box score did a great job and he did he did he did an unbelievable job fernando cruz came in shut the door but if tyler stevenson doesn't make those blocks it's a whole different inning Guys move up. First of all, there's a run that scores. Guys moves to third. And then there was another There was another pitch. There was like two or three pitches you could have argued. And I'm not saying that it took the world's best catcher to stop them. But I'm saying that, all in all, they were above average defensive plays. And he should get credit for that. And I think that it changed the, the, it changed the whole complexion of that inning. And it allowed the Reds kind of stay on schedule. We talk about other sports staying on schedule. Football especially staying on schedule, staying on schedule. Tyler Stevenson's defensive plays allowed Fernando Cruz to do two things. One, continue to pitch with the guys can still being on base. But two, having the confidence to keep going back to that pitch because that's his best pitch. And if you get to a spot where you don't trust the fact that your catcher is going to be able to block those pitches, you're probably going to be less likely to be able to throw them. And the big strikeout uh, to end the inning came on a split that basically was a dart right in the lower lower half of the corner, so or lower bottom inside corner. But um, you know, the pitch framing and all that, that's one thing, right? That's 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 more of like um what would you consider that? That's more of like a dessert, you know, that's that's a nice thing to have. The blocks that he made tonight are are what would make him somebody that we can trust moving forward and you can really build upon the foundation of Tyler Stevenson. And I and I hope that this is more of the same going forward. I hope it's not an outlier, but we will find out. Yeah, and I'm not as worried about catcher framing because I don't think you're going to need to be framing for much longer. Like, I think we that's going to be Mr. Robo something of the, of the past. A um, couple points uh, on this defense. You know, if the Angels tie up that game, there's probably a good chance that in the eighth inning, they bring in their one lefty. They have two lefties in their bullpen, but the other guy's a long man. Matt Moore, he's an absolutely nasty lefty, and he probably faces Ellie De La Cruz in that spot, or maybe even some of the other lefties. Ed and Nick Martini, for example. So Stevenson blocking that, not allowing the Angels to tie up the game, forced the the Angels to use a lesser reliever and not their their one really good lefty because he he has pitched. I'm looking at it three of the last four days, so you're not going to use him when you're you're trailing. So uh, there's a good chance that that just that itself 
help the offense the next inning. Uh, Tyler Stevenson, you know, coming into today, this isn't including today, that they're not up to date yet, 99th percentile in barrel percentage. He's 81st percentile in hard hit, 79th in average exit velocity. Like, he's he's hit, he's been hitting the ball very, very hard, hasn't had a whole lot of results to show for it. Uh, I, I think he looks completely different at the plate. He looks like he's um, getting under the ball. He's he's elevating a little bit more. Um, he, he looks like a much different hitter to me this year. Looks much more just comfortable at the plate. Um, and, and I, you know, maybe even when he's having these hard hit outs, it's not as like frustrating for him because he doesn't, he's batting lower in the lineup. It's not as much pressure on him, on him right now, but I think he looks great. I, I, I don't want to go overboard and say, man, he's for sure back. Like I joked at the beginning, like we don't need to go that far, but he looks like a different player to this point. And man, if he can keep it up, that's really, really big for this team. Yeah, they they uh, certainly so. It would be Tyler Stevenson's an X factor, right? I, I think that's safe to say. I think he's yeah. one of those guys. He's he's one of the guys coming into the year that we, we, there were the, the expectations for him to play. I would say well or exceedingly well was out the picture, I, I, and most fans I think felt that way. Now whether the club felt that felt like that or not behind closed doors, I don't know. I think it's. I think it is fair to say that the that the, the front office has not made any crazy moves to try to go find a catcher, whether that either be at a lower level um, and or at the major league level. Now they did re-sign uh, Maley, but I think some of that was just <clears throat> comfortability. Um, the Reds value clubhouse. I mean, they just do. I mean, I think that if you're a good clubhouse guy and you're really relatively borderline close enough to fulfilling a hole, it's almost like that gets you over the proverbial hump for this team uh, to, to make the roster. And I think Martini proved that. And I think that Maley was a, was proven that as well with him getting re-signed. So, you know, we'll see moving forward, ultimately, what Tyler Stevenson's capable of doing. But that would be a big shot in the arm. Big shot in the arm. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Game Time app, right? We we do, we do this all the time. Uh, every single show, usually, we mention the Game Time app at some point during the show. And, and, and I'll be honest with you, I was a little concerned. I was a little concerned. I was, uh, I was watching the game. We were in the seventh inning. We, we, we had one run, and I'm like, how am I supposed to tell people to spend their hard-earned money to go down there and watch a team that just can't score? But you know what? After that, after that eighth inning, I thought, you know what? I feel good about it because you can take, it takes two, two clicks. How many, Nick? Two? Two clicks. And uh, you can have tickets. If you download the Game Time app, you can use the code Cincy, C I N C Y. You get twenty dollars off your first purchase. And uh, here soon, uh, I'm gonna follow. Uh, we have a follow up meeting with those guys. We'll see how we're doing. See how we're doing. We'll see if they think our ad reads are good. I just, by the way, by the way, I, I know, and I probably should do this because I'll forward it to you. But, but uh, I just got the new, the new the new ad read package, and they said bring up a special memory of your Major League Baseball experience and s- explain it to the crowd, and then. Get him fired up to go. I mean, what do you want me to say? I, I, I don't know. I Baseball's fun. Uh, baseball's fun. You go to the ball yard, right? You get you a, a lemon chill. No free ads. Maybe you get you a cold pilsner. No free ads. Maybe you get you a pizza and a dog. You put them together. Some call it a Sky Rosa. No free ads. And you eat it. I'm going to try that, by the way. It seems disgusting. We'll get into that later, maybe. But Oh, you, wait, you're, saying it's, you're saying it's good? You think it's going to be great? So I've had it. What do I do? I not look like a guy that's had a Sky Rosa? I mean, come on now. Like I, clearly, you I've think had a Sky so. Rosa. It's actually good. It's magical. How do it's, you eat it? How do you eat it? You put the coney and the yeah. pizza. You roll it. You just roll. So you do you get the coney? Do you get the really quickly here? You get the coney. I almost put Elliot, almost put Elliot there. Yeah, <laughs> you get a coney. <laughs> you get a coney and the pizza. The chili, the whole deal, the cheese, the whole deal in one bite, right? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you eat it like a, you eat it like a piece of pizza, but you got a coney on. You top don't want to show me how you'd eat it. No, I, I think I think I would. Okay, far all enough. right. Well, all right, fair enough. Uh, but anyways, if you'd like to do that, you can get uh, your tickets on the Game Time app. Use code Cincy C I N C Y and get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Uh, all right, moving forward here in this lovely winning edition of Shatterbox Reds. Uh, we have defense, and whose name's next to that is Jonathan India. Wow, what a night! What a night! I do want to say something though before before 
I'm gonna let you say all the nice things. I'll be the I'll be the jerk. Tyler Stevenson, my man, Tyler Stevenson, you know, the guy that I slander all the time defensively, he threw a dime down to second base. And Jonathan just couldn't couldn't squeeze it. But that's okay. Otherwise, shout out to Jonathan. It was more of a defense slash India as two topics because we ran out of, of space. Although oh, India right. did make a really nice glove flip. Uh, but just overall, I mean, Steerman, you, are you talking about, are you talking, wait a minute now, are you talking about that ball that was like four feet left to second base? I know you're going to talk about the, the the shift, but... That's the play you're talking about, right? Yes, yeah, Jonathan India, in spite of the terrible defensive alignment that his coaching staff put him out there My for. gosh. He overcame it all and made a glove flip to Ellie De La Cruz for the out. You're finally getting it. You're finally getting it. I'm proud of you, Nick. You're coming around. You're coming you around. Lean you just got to lean into it at this point. Well, I mean, listen, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you right now, if you watch the game... I'm gonna put it in here. We'll let the chat decide. I want to know if it was if it was a double play with a routine infield, routine double play infield. We'll we'll get to that later. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, but no, like Steer, did you, did you see Steer's play earlier in the game? Uh, Ellie made, had to make a tough play. No. So Ellie had to make a tough play in the hole. Throw throw to first base. Uh, the runner beat it out like just a normal you know beating out an infield single. Nothing mm -hmm. really crazy about it but the runner at second tried to go all the way around and score steer clean turn throw a bullet home perfect strike to stevenson uh for steer guy that has barely played first base it was one of the more impressive defensive plays i've seen from him ellie made a really nice play in this this game we saw the play from india uh this is not going to be a good defensive team we know that with with uh, the personnel they have right now but it is nice to see them still finding a way to making some plays and you know, maybe in in terms of the the one to ten scale, maybe it's not a, a a one defensively. Maybe they're like a three. Like, and that's fine. Like, if this team with the personnel they have right now could be a three, maybe a three and a half, if we really want to feel optimistic, you can get by a little bit more until you get some of these other guys back. So. Oh, hey, listen, I this this defense. Uh, I I don't think anybody's going to be hanging their hat on it. So anytime you get anytime you get positive production out of that in a night, you talk about it. It's been good. Congratulations. Uh, some 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 other news that isn't so great though. Um, I, I know that my, my man uh, Elliot Rearing today, the zebra, he decided he was going to put out a post about uh, Ian Jabot. Unfortunately, uh, he doesn't have great news. But I'll let you kind of get into uh, the nuggets of that. And then obviously, uh, was there an update on Friedel that I miss? Yeah, there was an update. Basically, he's. Uh... 10 days to two weeks. So I guess that's what 10 to 14 days away from returning. Everything is good so far. Um, so it looks like he's close to starting a rehab assignment here in the next couple of weeks. So man, that's just huge. Um, Jabo, he stopped his rehab assignment. Anyone who's been, you know, following our minor league reports every day, probably shouldn't be shocked. I think he had like an ERA over 20. He had not looked good. His velocity was down. Uh, so look, uh, you know, all the, the worries about who's going <laughs> to, well, do we, we ever, can we ever, they like, like never worry about who's going to replace who in a bullpen when they come back from injury? Because I swear it never ends up happening, right? Correct. Yes. I, and I, I, I was even thinking today and, and I was, I, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I kind of like, uh, I, I think I was called bipolar earlier in the chat. That's fine. I don't care. Whatever. I mean, if, if, if that's what you want to call me, by all means. But if you don't think that I wasn't a little bit sad when I opened up my phone, when I seen I had a notification from the Cincinnati Reds and it told me that, that Tyler Stevenson and, and Stuart Fairchild and Espinal uh, were in the lineup. Uh, and, and it wasn't even so much as just where they were hitting. And it just, I don't know. I just, for, for, for an instance, I just closed my eyes and I was thinking, man, I was just like, envisioning a season where I was had Matt McClain and I had, I don't know, TJ Friedel and I have Noelve Marte and I have CES and I got Jamie or Candelario. And it's like, wow, what are we going to do with all these options? How in the world are we going to get everybody in the game? What are we going to do? How are they gonna, all going to hit? Are we going to, are we going to ask the major league baseball to change the rules? And we just going to roster bat. We got so many guys. And here I am thinking to myself, I'm sitting here on April 19th. And we got, we got just the bottom of the barrel. Bottom of the barrel. So from now on, I'm just 
I think I, when we go into spring training, I'm just going to be like Nick. I think I think I, I see where Nick goes with this now. It's like, ah, there'll be an injury. There's going to be an injury. There's going to be two, three, four, five, maybe six injuries. I'm just going to relax, hold the hold the phone, and we'll wait it out. It's Jonathan India, we're like, where's this guy going to play? Yeah. Now he's at, he's at an 0 for 24 slump, and you can't even can't even give the guy a day off. There's there's no options. There's no one. Right. There's no one to replace him at second base, the position he wasn't even allowed to play anymore. It is it is wild. It has been a wild. It's only been like what six weeks since all this happened. It feels like it was three years ago. Correct. Yeah. It's it, well, it came fast. Some are blaming us for going on the trip, but I don't. I don't think that was our fault. Who knows? We shall find out. Uh, all right. For those uh, to clear something up really quickly, if I may, if I may, I'm going to clear something up. P- people are saying that they shouldn't have. They, 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 I'm not suggesting they should have turned two based off of where they were placed at. You kidding me? I'm not saying that. I know that it was a credit. It was a great play. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, you know, in a standard the way they used to play, the old school way where the, the, the shortstop, you know, is like, you know, maybe 10 feet left to second base and the second baseman's like 10 or 15 feet right of second base. Traditional double play depth, you know. Uh, I'm saying if that were to be the case and they were playing there, does Ellie De La Cruz not just catch that ball going to his left, tag the base, and make an easy throw to first for a double play? I don't know. I think it's I think so, but I'm I'm asking you. But I'm definitely, to be clear, Nick, I'm not saying they should have turned it all play. I think sometimes people get mad at me because they think I'm irrational. I, that's not what I'm saying. I mean, unbelievable play by India, by the way. I, I give him all the credit in the world for that. And the and is, Ellie. The thing is, there's just there's no way for me to give any sort of like actual opinion on this without having all of the data that that the baseball guys. I don't have all of the data that would show me every single time a double play happens, you know, the the percentages and all that. Because you're oh, also not factoring the line drives that are hit right at them, that would be a clean base hit. And yeah, you're not getting two outs, but you're getting an out instead of the runner on second base scoring. So I I just, I have to think, maybe I'm naive. I have to think these multi-million, some billion dollar organizations that ha- have players take steroids to try to cheat. Uh, they, they've done their due diligence and know exactly the most efficient way to play defense uh, with all the data that they have. I have to think they do. Maybe I'm wrong, but I have no. I, I at this point, and, and I, I, I have no way of. I have no way of defending it. So I just, I, I put my hands up and I say, you know what, Trace, you got me. No, I don't. I don't got you. We're having. This is a fair thing. Listen, uh, the, the the we're the, the, we're not stopping the count. Okay. Sometimes some people would say, stop the count, stop the count. I'm not stopping the count. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you know this. The the. Maybe they don't do this in, in the front office. Maybe they don't have a bubblegum lid and they're actually keeping track. Maybe they're just using some server somewhere and the server's telling them what's here, what's there, what's going on. I don't know. I'm just saying that, you know what? I used to be like you, Nick. At one time in my life, uh, here comes the rant, all right? At one time in my life, I used to be like you. I used to have blind faith in the system. I used to listen to my teachers in high school when they said, Trace, if you don't do that homework, you're going you're gonna to not be able to learn and get an education, and you might struggle later on in life. Oh, Trace, when you, you won't be able to get away with that in college, Trace. You won't be able to get away with that in college. And then I get to college, and I realize, you know what? You know what? I was lied to by my teachers. They lied to me. This shit's easy. College is significantly easier. It's way easier. You know? Way easier. I'm just saying that's how I felt. That's how I felt. So then I move on in life and I'm like, all right, you know, and I've I'm like, okay, what's now? Mm. You know, Trace, you shouldn't. You shouldn't quit your job. You got a good job. You got a good job. You can sell copiers forever, Trace. You could sell copiers. Don't worry about your don't worry about your mental health. Don't worry about, by the way, if you do have mental health issues, uh, the Ohio Suicide Prevention Foundation would love to help you. But my point is, is this. If you are in a spot, okay, if you are in a spot where you're not happy, sometimes people tell you to keep doing something. Just keep doing it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then I and then I realized, you know what? I've been lied to by my teachers. These guys are probably lying to me too. So I'm like, you know what? What am I going to do? Hmm. I'm going to start my own business. And then and then they're like, you shouldn't do that, Trace. You're an idiot. Who in the hell is going to want to listen to sports talk in Cincinnati? They already got other sports talk. So then it, I don't know. At some point, I just, and then honestly, I'm not going to go there. But, you know, for all of us, I think we could all agree, politics aside, 
Politics aside, I think we can all agree. We can all take a life lesson out of what happened in 2020, okay? We had hula hoops or or we had we had little foam things inside of golf cups when we were playing golf, Nick, okay? Like 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 let's think about how stupid that was. Well, we were told that's what we should do. We should make sure that if we're going to go play golf, make sure you have a you have a, a, a pool noodle in the damn cup so so nobody can touch each other's balls. Yeah, I said it. And I, you know what? I've been lied to in my life. So I'm, I'm tired of trusting everybody. Yeah, they might make millions of dollars, but our government makes millions of dollars too. And you know what? They're not always right. So here's the thing. I'm going to use a bubblegum lid. They might have servers down there at Great, Amal- Great American Ballpark that can do circles around me. But I don't believe them. I want to find out myself. And by God, we're going to get to the bottom of it by the end of the year. End of rant. All right. Uh, Reds MILB. You don't have a whole lot going on, Nick. I, you got like what one baseball game? I, I got two that two that went final that we have uh, actual uh, box scores here, and then uh, I'll tell you what's going on the other ones. All right, so uh, Louisville's playing a doubleheader. They were rained out yesterday. Uh, they won the first one nine six. A good day from Reese Hines, two for four, stole two bags. He's really struggled to start the year, uh, so good to see from him. Mike Ford just uh, keeps on. Keep it on. He was two for four. Hit his sixth home run also. Uh, walked uh, Tony Santion. He threw a scoreless inning. A good bounce back from him. He actually had his first uh, time he looked uh, human his last time out. Louisville's currently winning game two, uh, three nothing. That is in the top of the third. Double uh, A Chattanooga. They're tied three three with Biloxi uh, in the eighth. Uh, Dayton. They're tied three three with Fort Wayne also in the eighth. Rhett Louder looked human for the first time in his pro career. Uh, and then we have Daytona. They went final. They went 4-1 over Bradenton. Really great day from Alfredo Duno, uh, the, the big catching prospect that uh, I know I love. A lot of other people love. Three for four with a triple, so good day from him. And then Adam Serwinski, just a nasty lefty. If you've seen highlights from him on, uh, on Twitter, uh, threw four shutout innings, struck out three, just gave up one hit. So good for him. And then, of course, on the Chatterbox Reds podcast, I'll dig in a little bit more to exactly what happened in in Dayton, Chattanooga, and then what happened in the uh, the second game with Louisville. Might even go back watch a little watch a little action of the games and try to give you some 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 nuggets. Um, that's why you're the best, and I mean that sincerely. For those that uh, uh, don't know, uh, I'm going to say this uh, one more time: you can download the uh, the podcast. And you know what? Just download the podcast and listen to it in the morning because it's a little bit different than this show. And then maybe you know what? If you're in, if you're if you're like me, you might get yourself into a spot where you realize, ah, I've already heard this before. That's fine. Just stop listening to the show at that point. But he puts a lot of a lot of information on, on the podcast that uh, is not available during the show. Just FYI. Um, anyways, what else is uh, important is to know what's going on next, which is who, what, when, where, and why, Nick, and um, why should I look forward to it? Yeah, Reds going for a series win tomorrow. How about that? Uh, Graham Ashcraft going up against Patrick Sandoval. Uh, last year, uh, Ashcraft against the Angels uh, went seven innings, gave up three runs in that one. Uh, Patrick Sandoval hasn't faced the Reds since 2019. Not a whole lot of, of useful information from that. Candelario is two for eight against him. He's the only one who's really saw him a lot. Uh, Santiago Espinal, he's 0 for four, so he's clearly due. Uh, Bubba Thompson, he's one for two. Yeah, I, I Sandoval's a lefty. I wonder if all these guys are out again. Trace, uh, does Bubba get a start? I just, I, I really, to. honestly, what is his purpose on this roster if he can't crack the lineup against a left-handed pitcher when the entire roster's out? The only thing that I could possibly think of to to try to explain this would be they must extreme, they must value extremely somebody that can steal a base at the end of a game. Other, otherwise, like, but then you, but then I guess you don't value power, right? Like you could argue, I don't know, defense but, uh, as well. To de- defense as well, but I don't know. What? Go ahead. My, my, my I, you look through though. Spencer Steers a pretty good base runner. Like you're not. Are you really going to pinch run for him very often? Probably not. You're not going to pinch run for Fairchild. You're not going to pinch run for Ellie. You're not going to pinch run for Fairley. You're not going to pinch run for Benson. And then the other guys are infielders. Like, how many spots is there really even for him to pinch run? I just, I like the idea early in the year, and I, I don't know. Maybe we'll see it tomorrow, and he'll steal the game-winning base, and we 
see it just to me. I just, I don't get it right now. I'd rather have another bat or something. I, I yeah. I mean, what would you go Mike Ford? Is that what you're, is that what you're going to do just to have some power off the bench or are you going to try to find one of the younger guys? Yeah, I think but I'd rather have not, Mike yeah. Ford and, uh, but again, it, I know, I I'll know. say this. I, I, I will it say may- this. If Blake Dunn, if Blake Dunn would have got off to a raging start and been tearing up the, the minors like like maybe some guys last year had done, like McLean or CES had done at the beginning of the year, you probably I mean, I, I don't I can't say this for certain, but you'd like to think they'd be like, let's just take our chance with this because the you know otherwise. Or even but, Jacob Herdebees. Herdebees is on the I. Yeah. L. I mean Right. Just a, a really unfortunate time to get hurt if you're a guy like Herdebees. I think I think he probably at some point after all the injuries would have been the guy that would have got the call just because he doesn't really have a whole lot more to prove at, at AAA, unlike a guy like Blake Dunn who just got to AAA. And Blake Dunn's been hurt too. He's only been pinched running for the last week. I, I, I love minor league baseball. This guy's been hurt. He hasn't. He's only pinch ran twice in the last week and there's no official report on what it is like i kind of wish they would have to report these things right that, w- yeah. that would be nice well it would help you it would help you out it would help it help it help out the uh the loyal fan but it, yeah, sometimes i want to keep things internal you know yeah juice squeeze Do uh, you, how many people y- really care y- yeah <laughs> Do you think uh, maybe you know you know what my goal is from now on is like can we ever get to a point where we're, where we uh, we've 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 developed enough of a community we become big enough to where we could get maybe just to sit down with the analytics department and we could just they could just they could just give me all of the raw data that that I am seeking. That would be an epic off season show. Let's would it be? It would be. A, it would be epic. I would love to. I you, you know what people might think that I'm like trolling and just like trying to be a jerk and you know I don't believe in analytics. I, I I it's not that at all. It's just more or less like I was like you for a long time. Like I felt like okay they know something I don't. But after so many balls that you're like okay that that should have been caught. Like why is that not caught? And I do agree with you. There are times where there's a line drive somewhere or there's a ground ball that a guy wouldn't have gotten to otherwise. That probably does happen, but it just seems like far too many times during during meaningful moments, you know, it just bites you in the rear end. And maybe, to be fair, it might be just because you're biased and you're looking for that. But I'd love to have a sit down conversation and ask, uh, you know, I guess meaningful questions more or less, and become informed. Because uh, ultimately, I like being informed. I like I like intelligence. Not that I have it. Gotta- but I like it. It doesn't even have to be the Reds. Well, well, that'll be an off-season search. We'll find someone that can could actually show us that kind of data because there there are people that there's like so there's there's public stat cast and then there's the the MLB stat cast and I I know some people uh, I'm not gonna throw them under the bus that somehow have got themselves access to the. MLB stat cast that that they're probably not supposed to and they're like they can see like the live catch probability that we can't see now and I, I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist okay because Lord knows I'm not one in fact I I, I, I try to def, I try to talk people off the deep end of all these crazy things I hear all the time if we're being honest so I am the farthest thing from a conspiracy theorist but I do think that there's I but I do think that there's some semblance of rationale thinking to say that if you are in one of these analytical departments, it would be in your best interest to make sure the numbers point to your favor. It would be in your best interest to make sure that, you know what, let's not, let's not let the guys know that our analytics this year, we, we were supposed to save 25 outs, but we lost 25 outs. Turns out the data wasn't right this year. I don't know. We'll figure it out for next year. We'll kind of, uh, how, how, do we, uh, how, do we, how do we massage this message in the offseason to tell them maybe India needs to scoot a little farther to the right this time or L.A. De La Cruz should shift a little more to his right? Or do they just say, you know what? Just shut up. Let's just shut up. Go on perfectly as planned. Is that crazy to think? Uh, yeah, I mean, so you're saying I'm crazy. All right, fair enough. Just saying. But no, I, I would I would love to know more because there's no way I can, I don't have the access to really give you a good right. answer. We're like, both, we're, bo- we're, we're both flying in the dark. You're trying to believe that the fact that the, here's, here's, uh, this is the policy show off once and for all. 
and this is why I love this show. We really have two, and not completely distinct different styles, but maybe I would argue we have two people that are just left of center, right, to, right of center, just, just slightly, uh, and what maybe makes this show go. I would just say that you're believing in the fact that there are millions of dollars poured into this organization yearly to try to build the best baseball team, right? Every single year, they're pouring money into this, making sure they have the most pos- the, the best possible way to win. And I would just say they signed Mike Miner. You know, that's what we would say. You don't always win. You can try, but you're not always right. That's all right. That's, that's all I'm saying. That team was tanking. I, 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 they did it. They did it. it. Was the, a smart warm guys, body. the smart guys it was did it. a warm body. A warm body. I don't give a rip. We all know. We all know from the jump that was an idiotic move. They were supposed to win 40 games that year. Mike Miner made him win 40 and a half at best. Why would you not use Boustakis? Like, oh, I'll use him too if we want. We'll I use mean, him too. Like, use Boustakis. I mean, Mike I'm just Miner. saying. They were, they were tanking. They were. I'm just suggesting. They weren't. How could you say they were? How can you say they were tanking when they signed a guy in free agency? Is it just because an old boy said they what he said and they had, to, they, had to, they had to act like they cared or something? They didn't sign him. They traded Amir Garrett for it. They, Royals took $2 million of Garrett's contract. Reds took the rest of Mike Miner. They paid him. Yeah, they needed an arm. <sighs> they, were, they were trading Luis Castillo and Tyler Malley at the deadline. They wanted an extra veteran arm to throw in there because at the beginning of the year they they had Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, and then Graham Ashcraft came soon after. They just wanted a old dude that could throw a baseball. They were taking. Do they know the Florence fleet the, the Florence Freedom have some arms right down the road. They could have saved some money, man. Mike Miner helped us get Rhett louder. You always you I'll tell you what, you are the man at making everything a positive. You are the I mean, man. That, that's a fact. He did. All right, folks, we got two things left to do on the show. You know what they are. Uh, let's just get Nick full frame and, and beautiful picture here. So let's let's get that out of there. Nice, nice, oh, nice. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. No, not nice, not nice. A little. Oh, oh, oh man. I'm my like, gosh, oh, look at this guy's oh, flustered. No, there we go. There we go. There we go. Nick Cage is pro shift. Yeah. What'd you just break? Something, What'd you break? Was, I think it was a kid's helmet. Yeah. It was an ice cream ice cream helmet. Yeah, it's been so it's been so long. I gotta find where the basketballs are around here. All right, folks, you know the deal. Uh this is the time of the show where I tell you that you are very, very much appreciated. Uh, if you got a chance to go down to the ballpark, go down to the ballpark, use the uh, game time code. As always, thanks to DSC for supporting us. And uh, I'm gonna do my best. I'm going to do my best here not to hurt myself and dunk a basketball. This is going to be fun. Uh, I I tell you what, I'm going to get a shirt made with this by the end of the year. No free ads. But you know what? We're back on track. We're back on track, and that's the most important thing. Uh, Call your family. Tell them you love them. Go give all your loved ones a big hug. Who knows? The world might be in it. Tyler Stevenson. Player of the game. Excellent blocks. Unbelievable job behind the plate. Hit a ball 400 and, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, 50 feet. Who cares? He hit one farther than he's never hit one before, so you just never know. Take care. Love y'all.